Hey guys, Akil Stokes here. Welcome back to another Five from the Live Room video. In today's session, we're going to take a look at a trading opportunity on the New Zealand Canada, which was a counter trend trading situation that, when looked at from a different perspective and on a different time frame, actually turned into a trend continuation type of move. So it's pretty cool to see how both analysis fits together. As always, if you're brand new to the show or brand new to the website, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Make sure the notification bell is hit. That way you don't miss the next episode. And of course, make sure to hit that like button before you leave okay enjoy and leave me a comment if you have any questions all right New Zealand Canada on the daily same thing IPDE process it's forever boring I'm gonna find where we're at predict blah 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 right we have come into a previous level level of inside structure not a major level um, by any means but a significant level and you see price has reacted right we've rallied up with a high momentum candle high momo up to that level we put in kind of a thicker doji candle right i know some people won't consider the candle at the top here um to be a doji because they have rules and whatnot on what a doji is and you know, basically what I see is this. I see a, t I see a wick to the upside. I see a wick to the downside. The, mar the price closes in the middle third, right? So for me, whether you want to call it a doji or not, neutral candle, right? Neutral candle. Wick to the upside, price bounced up. Wick to the downside, price back uh, bounced down. Even though the close was, was obviously higher than the open, it, it, it closed in the middle third of the candle. And you know that how we teach it in the foundation courses, that means a neutral candle. And we followed it up with a engulfing candle. This is our classic 3BR, right? Three burr, three bedroom apartment. Three bar reversal, good sign for a reversal. And what's cool here, you won't notice this on this chart, but you see this tail on our current daily candle? What, is, what does that tell you about what happened on the lower time frame? This is why I love reading a candlestick. I'm so mad it took me so long to like actually focus on it. Yeah, it means a pullback. Yeah, so we had a breakout, we had a pullback, and now we're continuing down. Boom, this is your trade right there. I actually used to, I used to study candlesticks when I first started trading, but I didn't study them as far as learning how to read them. Uh, read them. Read them. I studied them just like uh, like a spelling test where just like, you know, you, you you know, you see all these formations on the internet where it's like, ooh, morning star or ooh, three three blind mice, right? All those things, right? So I would just write them down on like index cards and study them and, and try to remember what they were supposed to mean. Ooh, three blind mice means this. But I never actually focused on how to read them. I just focused on what they look like. Um, but it's amazing the stories that they tell you once you know how to read them. So I would expect to continue to move down. Um, not a big move, but as Latch said, it's a lower time frame trade. I think we can come down to, at minimum, this level right here, 85.67. Maximum, somewhere in its consolidation range above the 85 even handle. Make sense? Why that level? Because there's nothing else in between that, that, that previous high Momo candle and that level. That is your next level of structure. And for me, structure leaves clues. It acts like a magnet. Price is pulled towards it. And then once price hits it, it is repelled from it. So what we did on the higher time frame is we didn't really think about trading. All we did was set up our premise, right? We want to get short. We want to get short. We want to get short until that level. If you're someone that wants to get long, you don't want to get long until that level, right? So if price action gets to that level, then you can start considering your long entries. If you're someone that looks to get short, you can look to get short until we get to that level. Analysis is analysis. No such thing as trending analysis. No such thing as counter trend analysis. Analysis is analysis, right? So go down to the lower time frame. You can see our little consolidation here. A little tight sideways movement, giving us a perfect level to look for targets at. Let's just hop down to the one hour. Boom. You can see a little bit of the ebb and flow here. What has happened, right? We came up. Did a little dance here, came down. Weird looking head and shoulders. Um, not sure if you would be able to identify this in real time, but it technically is one. Here's our violation. Here's that first pullback we talked about. Probably would have been a tough one to get a trade from unless you're very aggressive. 
by the way, this is the stuff that for you guys that are trend traders, uh, this is the stuff you want to pay attention to, right? I've been I've been gearing more and more towards trying to hop on the first move. Right. Obviously, that is the move that is optimal. You, you get on the first move of the trend. Not only is that or, or technically, I guess the second move after the violation, you get on the second move of the trend. That is typically the longest leg. Um, and obviously, it's it's the further the, it's further away from the exhaustion point of the trend. Um, that is a very good move to catch. The problem is it's also more aggressive, which means it's less confirmation, which means if you don't know what you're doing, you're probably going to be stopped out more. But as you become better as a trader and you build that intuition, remember that magic word we talked about, that intuition, and you start to notice little clues, right? What happens is you just get better at your analysis. And the better you get at your analysis, you can read more of the clues that the market has to give you. And you can find yourself in better trading situations. And, and not necessarily needing to wait for the full confirmation. Again, I started off when I was a CTS trader. I needed everything. I, I needed the full CTS checklist to line up before I could take a trade. I needed Fibonacci. I needed structure. I needed double top. I needed RSI. I needed divergence. I needed this. I needed that. AB equals CD. I needed everything. And I took some pretty good trades, but like they, they were far and few in between um, because I needed so much stuff there. So whenever you get a chance... And you're looking at charts just pretend like how how would i enter this right just look at look at this deal and be like okay how would i enter this realistically um inside bar break right here lower low lower close right there start start thinking about how you would enter those trades and it's just a good a good practice right so what we're looking at here again violation of the lows what are we going to look for after a violation of the lows guys Time to put on the the repeat button. Look for a pullback, yeah, right. Look for a pullback. Yep. Give me a second. I'm gonna load up my. Uh, let me get on the platform so I can put this in. Let me know what we're looking at. But yeah, this is this is a very. I latch your dead on. This is a very decent, um, very decent intraday trend continuation opportunity. So, just stare at it for a little bit. And then we're going to talk about how we can actually get involved lower. Um, but I want to get this into our pro trade log. Uh, 